Plus Gucci with a veterans military today's banger is how you can plus up boost your current VA disability rating from zero to 30 percent or 60 percent. If all you got is zero, hey, you know, majority of veterans don't got zero. Yeah, you're at least at 10, 20, 30 percent, whatever the case may be. But hey, got some bangers for y'all when it comes to boosting your overall VA disability rating as well as putting dollars in your pocket since that's what y'all care about, right? Let's fuck get into it. Ah! So first of all, mainly this video is going to be about GERD, gastrointestinal issues. And what is the average VA rating for GERD, you might ask? Well, we got this huh, sexy little slide over here, and it's commonly rated under diagnostic code 7346 hiatal hernia in the schedule of rating CFR 38 adjustive system. Hiatal hernia is a common cause of GERD. So you can't really go into the CFR 38 and look for GERD specifically, but for my throat goblins out there, A, you having some indigestive issues, that stomach acid keeps coming up, this is where you wanna go, whether it's spawning from your active duty time in the military or if it's being caused by an already service-connected VA disability. And the VA schedule of rating allows a disability rating for hiatal hernia or GERD ranging from 10 to 6%, but those specific ratings are displayed right now on the screen. So let's look at this right quick. 6%, you gotta have pain, vomiting, material weight loss, hematosis, <laughs> hemoglobin, you know what I'm talking about, millennia with moderate anemia and or symptoms, combinations productive of severe impairment of health. So if it's causing, you know, I know some veterans who GERD has completely deteriorated their esophagus. You know, their throat. There's a lot of veterans who suffer with this. Going into the 30% VA rating criteria. Persistent recurring, motherfucker, I'm not a doctor. Y'all know what that word is. Dis distress with dysphagia, pyrosis, and regurgitation accompanied by subsaturnal or arm or shoulder pain. Productive and considerable impairment of health. 10% rating, you just need two symptoms from that 30% criteria. So, moving on. And so, how do you prove GERD? Well, if you had in-service complaints, it'll be an easy way, segue for you to just file direct service. Deployment history, duty station history, whatever case may be. What the VA looks for is complaint history. Not a lot of veterans get an endoscopy done whenever they're active duty. However, it is something that you can do today. You can walk into almost any VA medical facility or your private medical care provider and ask for A, I need an endoscopy. Why? Why do you need one? Because I'm having GERD. Well, just the first time you're complaining about it. Well, if it's your first time complaining about it, just cause now, hey, you figured out you can get from anywhere from 10 to 60%, you definitely wanna make sure that you're building that medical evidence. Complain, complain, complain. Why? Where's this GERD coming from? Has it always been going on? When did it start? What are some symptomology? What are some things you're feeling? You need to be reporting this to that VA medical provider, to that private care provider, in order to accurately diagnose you with it, as well as do the correct and accurate diagnostic testing that the VA likes to look for when it comes to adjudicating claims for GERD. Like if you have nothing, you just have a little bit of complaints, you might get 10%. Cool. But for 30%, you're absolutely going to need an endoscopy done because this way the VA said, okay, yes, the, the veteran has been complaining about it since their time in the military and or post-military if it's being caused by an already service-connected disability such as PTSD, migraines, anything you're taking for medication usually leads to what? GERD and or IBS for all my, <laughs> my booty old goblins out there. Hey, so definitely. So if you're at GERD, and IBS. I see very few veterans getting both of them service connected separately now. Now the VA likes to take into consideration both because they're both digestive issues. So if you file a claim for GERD as well as file a claim for IBS, eh. and if you're having severe issues with both, more than likely the VA is going to service connect you for both as long as you got what? An endoscopy, camera down your throat, and then a colonoscopy. That's the camera. Uh where the light don't shine. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You got both of these. You got a diagnosis. You have symptoms. You have 
testing and you know the images capturing hey yes you definitely got issues going on in the back door you definitely got issues going on in the front door how do we address this a lot of people are walking around with GERD or IBS so if it's direct service cool it can be pointed to a deployment multiple deployments and or areas in which you've served in if it's like new damage that's going on in your stomach lining in your testing area that can be attributed to an already service-connected disability. Multiple primary disabilities causing that GERD and the IBS. Possibly the medication you're taking for migraines, the medication that you're taking for PTSD, for insomnia, anxiety, depression, the medication that you're taking, you know, pain medication, whatever the case may be. If you're taking medication on a daily basis for an already service-connected disability, it contributes towards that IBS towards that GERD goblin. You know what I'm talking about? But how do you get there? You gotta build that medical evidence. You just can't go in and be like, hey, I need this. Why? Because I'm trying to get to that 100%. The VA is gonna be like, okay, we're gonna keep you in a VA claims process for about nine to 18 months, not even send you to a CMP exam and then deny your claim. Why? Due to a lack of complaint history, due to a lack of medical evidence, due to a lack of that camera in your throat and in the back door. You know what I'm talking about. I ain't gonna keep beating it up. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, hey. Can GERD be secondary to PTSD? Yes, I've already cleared that. GERD can be secondary to almost any disability if you got that complaint history. You got the causation. Your doctor acknowledges that yes, that medication that you're taking is causing you to have upset stomach, acid reflux everything related to GERD I'm going to rec I'm going to refer you out to what get a endoscopy conducted we get a formal diagnosis as well as treatment and medication more medication on top of the GERD right <laughs> that makes no sense as well as when it comes to IBS IBS as well so if you put in it you know if you build your medical evidence correctly you could definitely put in a claim for GERD IBS direct service and or secondary to any disability that you believe working with your doctor because veterans you know you can't diagnose yourself but you can have an idea of what's going on with your body you're taking a medication on a daily basis so what record it talk to your doctor call them up telemessage you know telehealth um secured messaging whatever the case may be if you're not building medical evidence the va is not going to give you the benefit of the doubt of any disability as well as furthering your compensation that you're receiving because what it's 2024 all bets we all care about what dollars if it don't make dollars don't make sense always remember many vets many 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 vets got hate on me because i don't give a fuck because i am depot out have mercy on me ah